Okay, so it is 2.05 now, so I'm gonna get going. Um, welcome, thank you for joining us today. This is a presentation about toxic freeze as easy as one, two, three, um, avoiding accidental poisonings. Um, I'm Mason Twombly, I work for Natural Regional Planning Commission as an environmental planner. Um, so let's talk a little bit about our program. So, um, a little bit about, um, you know, why we started this program. Um, you know, we had staff members that had young kids and, um, you know, one of our, our former staff members actually, you know, created this idea um, to come up with a program that was really focused on um, preventing childhood exposure to, to, to um, poisons um, in the household. Um, and so some of the background around that is, you know, over 300 children in the U.S. Um, ages 0 to 19 are treated in an emergency department um, daily, and of those, two will die. Um, and, you know, those numbers are, are too high. Um, you know, it's, it's something that is avoidable, and it's something that we can always be working towards, um, you know, lowering these. And out of those, those numbers, 50% of accidental poisonings occur in children that are younger than six. And so, you know, these accidental poisonings can have long-term um, health effects and even, um, you know, in, um, kind of affect growth. Um, so that is, you know, something that we thought a lot about in how to, um, you know, push these programs. Um, so that was, that is the thought behind the Toxic Free is as easy as one, two, three program. Um, and so we came up with this program, we did a lot of outreach um, into the community. We collected um, surveys that we had physically out at libraries and community centers um, across our region. And we collected, um, we collected a lot of information about how, what parents do know about the hazardous materials in their homes, um, you know, whether they're using, whether they use alternatives or try to use alternatives or, um, you know, and where they would prefer to get information about, um, you know, about has, household hazardous waste and, and things in their home that could, could poise, um, you know, a safety issue for them and their, their families. Um, and so um, taking all of that input into account, um, we created this program um, in the goal, with the goal to reduce childhood um, poison exposures through, edu through education. Um, and so, you know, I will be going through these main points, which is proper identification, the proper, proper storage, um, proper disposal, the use of alternatives, um, and of course, where to go for important resources. Um, all right, so that is that. Um, so the first, first thing that I'm gonna talk about is properly identifying hazardous products. Um, you know, so there's, there are a lot of pro hazardous products that are in the household, um, you know, some that we realize and some that are not quite as obvious. Um, so it's important to know the different, um, all of the different symbology and, you know, the wordings that exist out there that are on these products that we have in our homes. Um, because understanding those um, understanding those warnings is the, like is the first step in understanding how to prevent accidental poisonings. Um, so the first one we'll talk about is some corrosive substances. So this is a um, a little um, icon of the symbol for corrosive substances, and that can damage eyes and skin and tissue, um, and can result in. Uh, chemical burns, inhalation, and ingestion. It, dam it can damage the respiratory and gastrointestinal tracts. Um, so obviously, you know, some of these some of these products can be really dangerous, and they're in some of the most commonly used things in our house, like you know, rust removers, you know, car batteries. If you've got stuff in the garage, bleach. Um, these things can be you know commonly found in a lot of people's houses, um, and if you know they're not not taken care of properly, if they're not stored safely, they can um, pose an issue in your home. Um, flammable substances, so 
you know, this one is a little bit more straightforward in what the, the symbology means. You know, this has a picture of a flame. So, you know, you can kind of infer that one, but, um, you know, some of these are not as straightforward, which is why it becomes more of an issue, um, you know, trying to understand all of this labeling. Um, but solid, uh, you know, flammable substances can burn and ignite and that causes fire. Um, and, you know, anything, you know, solids, liquids, and gases can all be flammable. So don't assume that because it's a, you know, a liquid, um, you know, a good example is like paints, like oil-based paints. It's really flammable, even though it's a liquid, you know. Um, so, you know, flammable substances are, you know, and they can obviously flammable substances are dangerous because they can, you know, cause fire, they can start, um, you know, cause burning and, you know, can end up with serious damage. Um, and then ingestion um, can also cause a number of different issues, especially in young children. Um, so these are some examples, you know, you've got gas, of course, um, you know, anything in a compressed and aerosol can, you paints, um, in insecticides, you know, like bug spray, it's highly flammable, oil-based paints as well. Um, these are all highly flammable substances that, you know, I mean, most of us have in our homes um, that you wouldn't, you know, I mean, some of those things you wouldn't expect to be extremely volatile, but um, they are very flammable and they should be, you know, taken care of um, with that in mind. Um, so this is toxic sus substances. Um, this is the little icon for it. Um, it does, you know, make it clear that it is, you know, bad for your health, um, implies, you know, death is possible, um, and it can cause injury or death through ingestion, inhalation, or absorption. Um, this symbology is a little bit more straightforward, but it is a little vague, um, so that's important to keep in mind, but it's definitely important to, um, to note that, you know, usually that is if you ingest it or inhale it, um, then it'll cause issues. Um, so some examples of those, there's nail, nail polish removers, um, like chlorine and chlorine tablets, isopropyl alcohol, you know, these are, these are products that are in our homes, um, you know, not, you know, that you, you know, wouldn't necessarily think, <laughs> um, you know, to, to be putting in any super secure location because, you know, nail polish remover is something that, you know, people use every so often and you wouldn't think that, you know, that would be such a risk, but it's, you know, it's a very, um, it can be, you know, bad, extremely bad for the system. Um, so it's important to make, make sure that those are stored properly, um, as well as chlorine and, you know, and especially in the summer, obviously, you know, these are, these type of things are out and around more often. And isopropyl alcohol, of course, is something that we use for, you know, all, all kinds of things, you know, use isopropyl alcohol for all kinds of things in the home and for treating wounds, et cetera. Um, but it's in the house usually, and um, that can that can always be accessed in a home usually. So it, it's something to be aware of that, you know, if you have young children, you do not want them to be able to get anywhere near that and ingest it. Um, so here's reactive substances. Um, this is, um, you know, it has an icon again that isn't super straightforward. So it's another one that, you know, you might not be able to just infer right off the bat. Um, but, you know, it, there are substances that can spontaneously ignite and create vapors uh, when mixed with other products. It's a little bit less, um, you know, there's a lot, there's a few less um, examples like directly in the home for reactive substances, but it's still something, you know, keep in, to keep in the back of your mind. Um, and make sure of, you know, this includes like propane tanks, uh, things of those natures, you know, if you bring the grill down in the basement or anything, um, you know, make sure, make sure that those are properly sealed up and everything. Um, these are irritants, which are acutely toxic substances and they can cause severe irritation to the skin and eyes. Um, um, some examples of those are some of these sprays and different cleaners. You know, these things can cause, you know, all kinds of irritation um, to the skin and the different, you know, different outer organs of your body. Um, so it's important to make sure that you're not let, leaving these directly out where children can reach them as well. Um, so I think I, this last 
last one. This is actually the symbol for health hazards. So I think irritants was actually wrong back there, but um, this is the symbol for health hazards and it in indicates substance that can have serious long-term health effects. And, you know, for the, for the most part, you think about these things as, you know, things that can cause long-term um, long -term issues like, you know, things that are carcinogens. So if you're, you know, so, you know, like the, this is aquatic herbicide, but, you know, a lot of pesticides, um, Roundup, things like that, that can have long-term health impacts, um, you know, and a lot of those are, you know, they're in the home or, you know, in your garage um, that you might not necessarily, you know, also you might not think to keep, keep locked up or, um, you know, stored up high or anything. Um, and then there's also, there's kind of a hierarchy of written warning labels. Um, that you know do not include pictures which you know can be a little bit more difficult because again it's just another another step to understanding um the labeling and all of this information that you have to process from the bottles and um you know containers so danger is it means um if the danger is not avoided it, um, it'll cause death or serious injury warning means it if the warning is not heeded, it can cause death or serious injury. Um, and caution means if the precaution is not taken, it may cause minor or moderate injury. So it's kind of a hierarchy. Um, you know, danger is like the most potent of one of these written warning labels, and then so on. Warning is medium, and caution is a little bit less so. But still, important things to watch out, especially you know if you have young children running around. These products can still cause a lot of harm, and you know depending on how much they are exposed to. It can be very, um, very dangerous. Um, so that's a little, so that was, you know, a quick run through of proper identification. You know, that's, that was the first step of trying to, um, of understanding how to prevent accidental poisonings in your home. Just understanding those products, understanding how they'll be labeled um, and knowing what they are and what kind of issue they, they can pose. Um, the second point is proper storage. Um, so obviously storage, you know, that came up a little bit in what I was talking about before with the examples and everything. You know, proper storage is, you know, another very important, um, you know, method to, to keeping these, um, you know, preventing accidental poisonings from happening. You know, if you properly store these things in places where children cannot reach them or cannot access them, or where they're locked up, um, it can you know resolve some of those those um, dangers. Um, so it's always important to check the label for some special instructions. It's a little bit more, again, um, as I was talking about before. You know, there's a lot of information on this the bottles. There's a lot of information that's required to be on there um, for these products. So you know, another thing to be looking out for is if there are, you know, if there's information um, about you know, if it needs to be stored in a cool or dry, well-ventilated area, or if it needs to be stored at, um, you know, not below freezing, you know, that can be a really important thing to note, um, you know, before you go and throw it in your garage. Um, so it's, it's important to know these things. And then, you know, we have, you know, they have different storage messages, you know, keep them locked up in a cool or well-ventilated place, um, you know, Many of these products do have special instructions about how to store them, um, and you know they also included with the warning labels that we were just talking about. Uh, you can see a danger and you know a flammable sign here. Um, so you know this is just some more examples of that labeling and what to look for. Um, so these are just some be best practices for for safe storage, and you know I, I was just talking about a little bit of it. You know, store out of the sunlight. Um, and out of moisture and ensure some proper ventilation. So it's not just being all contained in there um, and not getting, not getting out. Um, so, and then keep, keep your storage area, you know, preferably in some sort of a, a cabinet that's higher up where a child can't reach it. Um, and then consider locking those cabinets. Um, you know, it's a, it's an easy, easy thing that, you know, maybe is admirably inconvenient for, for you, um, you know, or, or your, your family when you are cleaning or when you have to access these products. But, um, you know, especially when you've got young kids around it, it, it can be really, 
um, important and it's a really strong step to, you know, preventing any poisonings from happening is to, to lock these cabinets and, you know, making sure the kids can't get into them. Um, and then keeping products in their original containers is really important because as we talked about before, there's a lot of labeling that is directly related to, um, you know, how that should be stored and what kind of warnings exist for that, those materials. Um, you know, so obviously it presents a risk if you are going to remove it from its original container and put it into something else. Um, you don't want people or, you know, family members, children um, picking up products that they do not know what is actually in them. Um, that can be a big issue and it can, you know, certainly lead to less than desirable outcomes. Um, any, and then any product that you, you know, it's, it's necessary to move from an original container, um, just be sure to make sure that you label what it is and um, any previous labeling you should remove. Any labeling from whatever was in it before, make sure to take that off. You don't want to confuse anybody about it, um, you know, whether that be your family or kids, um, you know, clearly label it so that you know what is in it and, you know, what danger that it could pose. Um, so that wraps up a little bit about proper storage. Um, so now I'm going to talk a little bit more about proper disposal. Um, so as we, you know, as I was talking about at the beginning, these products are, are dangerous. They, you know, they have chemicals in them. You, in, they're not, most of them are not safe to always put right in the trash. Um, so this causes a whole whole nother issue of, you know, if I'm trying to get rid of these products and trying to make my household safe, um, you know, safer and prevent accidental poisonings, what do I do with these materials? You know, how do I, how do I get rid of them um, in a proper way that's not, you know, causing damage to, to other people or the environment? Um, you know, and it's a very, it's a valid concern. Um, so um, in this region, in the Nashua region, um, we hold household hazardous waste collections, which take um, all sorts of things, you know, paints, um, polyurethane, solvents, thinners, antifreeze, fluorescent bulbs, um, you know, mercury products, pool products, you know, a lot of these products in your home that, you know, could, could be the causes of accidental poisonings, we will, we will take a household hazardous waste collections, um, you know, we and we um, obviously promote that as a way to, you know, make your home safer and prevent accidental poisonings from happening. Um, we hold six events, um, six household hazardous waste collections, April, November. Um, and, you know, there's always information about that on the Nashua RPC um, dot org website and you know the, if you're not from this region the the state of new hampshire new hampshire des has some inf has information about different collections in different areas um so there's a, you know there's a little bit more information about that later on um and i did want to note that you know we are having our final collection this saturday november 7th um so if you've been doing cleaning if you've been doing some you know cleaning out of your household products, cleaning out of anything that is household hazardous waste. Um, this Saturday, November 7th from eight to 12 um, is you know, the last event for the, the Nashua region um, for the season. So that's important to note um, because you know, so many of us have been at home cleaning up our, cleaning up our homes and trying to, trying to clean up our, our houses as we've been bored and quarantined and hanging out at home. Um, so that is our final collection um, and a very, very important thing to be able to offer. And I hope, hope we have a good turnout where we collect a lot of waste. Um, and then the last, you know, one of the, another um, thing to talk about is alternatives, hazardous products. You know, we'll just kind of run through um, some of these, you know, there's, there's so many alternatives to hazardous products now, um, you know, there's, there are products that are specifically made to be, um, you know, non-hazardous in the home, like, you know, some notable brands like Seventh Generation, um, you know, they have, there's all sorts of, you know, products out there that are marketed um, towards being non-hazardous and being able to, um, you know, being able to clean without these toxic substances. Um, but, um, you know, these are some 
uh, examples of just, you know, alternatives with things that we usually have in our home. Um, so, you know, club soda is a good example of carpet and upholstery cleaner, um, you know, ink spot remover using some, uh, using cold water and cream of tartar um, in, a, in lemon juice, um, you know, these are, you know, some examples, pre-laundry treatments, um, multi-purpose cleaners, toilet bowl cleaner. There's all sorts of these, you know, um, common, common, um, you know, things that we have usually in our homes that we can, that we can actually use to, um, to replace some of these products. Um, you know, so some of these, you know, like pesticides, you know, like the, um, you know, a raid or something, you could use red chili powder um, where ants are coming into your home and that will deter them from coming in. And that's a non-toxic um, thing. Fertilizer, you can reuse um, compost created from your own food scraps. So that's kind of a, you know, something that, you know, a lot of people, you know, think about doing in this area, um, you know, specifically if you've got, you know, got, it's got some backyard space or something, you know, you can set up composts and you can use that as a little bit of fertilizer for your front lawn. Um, your flea and tick repellents and insects on plants, you know, there's all sorts of these alternatives for, you know, um, for chemicals that, you know, come from products that you usually have in your home um, for unrelated stuff. Um, you know, so here's some more mosquito repellents, nematodes, slug and snail repellents. Um, you, know, you, you know, there's certain plants that are good for that. Weed killers, um, you know, there's all sorts of different things. And we have a wonderful set of guides that we created as part of this program um, that is all about alternatives and how to, how to use them um, in, their, in the home. Um, and use them in place of hazardous products. Um, so that is on the National RPC website, which we'll talk about in a bit. These are still some alternatives. See, there's just so many. Um, I kind of forget how many slides cover are covered by all these alternatives. Um, you know, for battery corrosion, um, oil stain removing clothes. Um, yeah. And then the last thing, uh, the, the last point that I will, will make is knowing re your resources. Um, um, at the end of the day, you need to, it's really important to know where to be able to turn um, in the event that an accidental poisoning does occur, um, or you think that one might have occurred. You know, in an emergency, in a case where you know that it was a poisoning, you know, always, you know, your first resort or your first action should always be to call 911, um, you know, time is of the essence in that sort of situation, especially with young children, you know, depending on, on the dosage, you know, you, you need to be quick. Um, so if you know that it was a poisoning, for sure, 911 is always your best bet. Um, and then um, the Northern New England Poison Center, um, which is the poison center in this region, um, it has a hotline right there on this, um, <clears throat> that's on that image. And they operate that hotline 24 seven. So that's another really great resource. So, you know, if you, if there's, um, you know, something that isn't, you know, an immediate emergency, um, you know, that like some, they've ingested something that probably wouldn't kill them, but, you know, you want to know, um, you know, what a side effect would be, or if, you know, they should go, or if they should, you know, go and get their stomach pumped um, or something, you know, they have a 24 hour hotline for that, um, which is a huge resource for parents. Um, um, and so they have a lot of educational materials as well on their website. There's all sorts of different guides and there's printouts and different um, materials and activities for kids. Um, it's really a great resource. So if you are not familiar with it, um, it's definitely something to keep in mind, um, but certainly to know their hotline um, in case of emergency is something you should you know, think about putting the 24-hour hotline in your phone. If you if you have children, um, you know it's an important important resource. Um, and so, you know, knowing your resources on a little bit less of a serious note, um, you know, um, you know, moving on from an emergency, um, education. You know, there's there's a lot of resources out there. Um, and you know, from this organization, from National Regional Planning Commission, you know, we have the have the materials that 
we have created over the years from household hazardous waste collections and you know outreach materials about that but we have some some great new guides that we created as part of the toxic free is is the ccs 123 program um, so those are on our website under a new tab that is for toxic free is as easy as one, two, three in the environmental section. Um, so, you know, always, you know, check that stuff out. Um, we're going to continue even after we, we um, finish up this project to, to update that information and keep, um, keep adding to those resources because it is a really important thing to be, to be touching on. Um, especially when we are so involved with the household hazardous space collections, we see it as a, you know, a vital, vital link between those things and um you know it's a it's um the education around that is certainly important to us um so some more resources um the epa has some has a, a whole program about safer safer choice um and that is more in towards you know products that are created um to be non-hazardous um so those are you know you know they <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Um, they will be labeled. Um, a lot of those those products will be labeled as an EPA safer choice um, product, and that means that they're non-hazardous. You know, they are approved. Um, you know, as a non-hazardous um, alternative. Um, <clears throat> so that you know that is a really really cool thing that they've been working on um, and promoting. And um, the public health department. Um, this is for Nashua, the city of Nashua, um, and then there's a there's a Greater Nashua Public Health um, Network as well. Um, but you know your local public health department has a lot of resources about about these sort of things as well. Um, you know they have you know a lot of these places have programs specifically about lead um, prevention, but you know they focus on on a lot of other topics as far as um, these, um, <clears throat> as far as uh, accidental poisons as well. So usually they do have resources as well. Um, great resource always, and, you know, if you're not from Nashua or the greater Nashua region, of course, you know, look into your local public health department, you know, give them a call. I'm sure they have resources as well. Um, and then as, as well, there's also the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services. Um, you know, they have a lot a lot of information and outreach information about certain products and what to do with them. Um, you know, so if you're not not from this region, uh, they do have a you know a whole. They have a list of the different household hazardous waste collections um, in the state. Um, they also have a hazardous waste hotline, um, which you know I use pretty frequently. Um, so it's a great resource. You know, they they tell you what is the best option to do to um, you know use to get rid of certain products. Um, so that's helpful as well, um, but that is always a great resource. A little bit, a <laughs> little bit harder to navigate. There's a lot of information on DES's website, um, but certainly, if you can find it, there's some great information. Um, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out. I, um, I my email is Mason Twom, M A S O N t at nashuarpc.org um, or you can you know send an email email to me at this organization um, if you have any questions please feel free to ask them I, i'll stay on here for a little bit um, you know there is a there's a, a chat box a question and answer thing on here so if you have anything um, please feel free um, but thank you thank you for joining me um, certainly a project that i've been happy to work on and it's uh it's a really important stuff. So thank you.